Welcome to Eat Smart Drink and um, thank you for joining me again. So today we have quite a you know quite a quite a cool jam to try. Um, so a lot of you have heard of Laphroaig. Laphroaig is one of the most famous and quintessential Isla whiskey you have. Um, I mean legend has it that Laphroaig was actually so peaty and so medicinal that during the Prohibition era, it was allowed to be exported or imported in America because the government was like, who the hell would drink something like this? Uh, Lafroy can be polarizing, okay? A lot of people, um, they get juice to whiskey and they'll say, oh, you gotta try Lafroy 10. Well, actually, um, Lafroy 10 is probably the worst whiskey, the worst whiskey to start with. It's absolutely horrendous to start with, unless you, you, you like eating campfire dust. Uh, it's actually a terrible one to start with. Uh, Lafroy 10 is by all means lacks balance, lacks integration, um, you know, the smoke is so powerful. So in my opinion, anyway, it's not the best one to start with when it comes to peat. However, today we are actually reviewing the Lafroy 18 year old. Okay? The reason why I want to review this is in our next episode, we have an independently bottled Adelphi Lafroy 17 year old single barrel and after that we are going to side by side them which is going to be very exciting to show you its age a determining factor what is the determining factor of a good whiskey uh, and the difference in flavor with alcohol a little bit higher or not single barrel single malt um, and things like that this whiskey is 48 percent 18 years old this retails around about 250 i'd say 300 us dollars that's a retail of them it kind of gives you an indication on um, the difference between Lafroy, which you can go to duty free and get your Lafroy at 60 bucks, and then suddenly it jumps up. Lafroy doesn't do, in fact, um, I haven't really seen one, Lafroy doesn't do many age statements at all apart from the 10. Um, I believe 15 was available for a while and it's been discontinued. I don't know if it's been reintroduced. I certainly haven't seen it um, around much. They have a lot of the travel exclusives like um, PX cask and all of that jazz. Um, all of them are no age statements, um, but this one is age statement 18 minimum years of malt. So from the get go, let's try them. Same as usual, two drops of water, no drops of water. <coughs> now before I even knows it, just from pouring it, I can already smell, I can already smell this, this oil coming off there. Oh, I mean, Lafroy is known for its extremely medicinal nature. From the nose, I'm immediately getting wet grass, burning wet grass. I'm getting campfire smoke, not right directly in front of it, but maybe you're a few meters, maybe 20 meters away from it, you're getting that hint of smoke. Oh, I'm getting um, slight fruit, slight sweetness. Can't quite tell what fruit is quite overwhelming, the peat. Now, the smell of peat that I'm getting is very different to the Lafroy 10. Lafroy 10 is much more hit in the face. Um, in saying that, you're not gonna miss the peat here. You're gonna, you're gonna smell it. Now, the reason why the peat smell is slightly more subdued than this, the longer a peated spirit spends in the barrel, the more mellow it becomes. Just by breathing in time and reacting with the wood, it becomes I don't know, um, I mean, I don't know the exact science of it, but the wood, be, uh, the, the, the peat becomes a bit more subdued. So this one here, I mean, this is very fascinating. I mean, I mean, I can definitely smell the bourbon, um, uh, a, a bourbon influence here, coconut, vanilla. I'm smelling strong smell of ginger, and I'm talking not candied ginger, I'm talking a, um, a freshly sliced ginger, okay? so. I'm getting that straight away. I can't ignore the fact that I'm smelling um, burning leaves, wet leaves, grass, I mean, even a tiny bit of rubber. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but I'm getting a burnt rubber um, and an undeniable herbaceousness, thyme, rosemary, a little bit of licorice. It's, it's an extremely complex smell. The nose is compelling, it's, it's complex, it's, it's fantastic. Let's compare it with the water. Okay, so with the water, with the water, the sweetness comes out a lot more. The peat is subdued. This peat, sorry, I'm just trying to. The peat does subdue a little bit. 
I'm getting a slight earthiness, but not so smoky and peaty. Sweetness comes out, fruit comes out a lot more. A slight floral bouquet. Exceptional, exceptional nose. If I was to vote just purely on the nose, I'd say for my palate, or my nose, shall I say, the three drops of water improves the nose. So now let's try it. Now just keeping in mind, <coughs> I don't recommend that if you're a relatively novice whiskey drinker, and when I say novice, I mean if it's your first dram, that's different. But if you're just kind of getting into it and you're starting to buy the, you know, the older whiskies and the more kind of out there whiskies, I don't suggest that Lafroy is something that you immediately should jump into. Um, from memory, the Lafroy's are known to be unbalanced, really, really drastic sort of whiskies, okay? Let's try this. Mm. I'm getting bell pepper, green bell pepper. Oh, that peat is just walloping in my face. So, this peat is what I call an unintegrated peat, which means that you are tasting the spirit and then the peat afterwards. There is no middle ground, okay? So, unintegrated peat is really, really sharp. I mean, I'm just getting, I get the taste and it disappears and it becomes peat through the nose. It's oily, oily as hell, super oily, super complex. The green pepper lingers, citrus, wet grass, it's like, you know, when you get the lemon rind and you, you squeeze the oils out and that residue in your hand, you get the hint of that as well. Uh, you're getting the wet grass in there. You're getting some freshly tanned leather, you know, like when you go to a, a leather store and you get that leather smell, a really strong leather smell that's been treated, that's, you're getting that. The power is not so powerful. 48 seems to be not a bad ABV starting point on this one. Slight bitterness towards the end, a little bit like a grapefruit, like biting into a ripe grapefruit. Um, it's not unpleasant. I like bitter flavors. Uh, some juniper, juniper aftertaste. Very herbaceous still. Very herbaceous, savory. The salinity is through the roof. Uh, very salty, you can taste like, it's almost like it embodies a bit of sea spray in there for you. Very salty. I can taste it right now, but the aftertaste in my mouth is just salinity through and through. Let's try it with the water and see what happens. Hmm. When you add water to it, it takes away the spice, the ginger, it leaves you with a lot of lemon. The smoke is still there, but it subdues a little bit as well. Actually, funny enough, with the water, it tends to integrate the peat and the, um, the, 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 um, the spirit much more. So in the middle ground, you're getting more of a bridge between the spirit and the smoke. It's not just suddenly, you know, um, flavor, no flavor. Peat, smoke, no flavor. Um, the oiliness subdues a little bit, it's still there. You can't escape the oiliness. The oiliness just coats your mouth like, I mean, I got my mouth closed and I'm breathing through my nose and I'm just getting peat, peat, peat. There's no escaping the peat. It is a very heavily peated whiskey. With the palate, I'm getting, I'm only getting that with the water, I'm getting a little bit of apricot, I'm getting, a hint of ginger, but once again, with the water, everything is kind of smoothed out a bit, rounded it a little bit more. But dare I say it, with water, it's a little bit boring, actually. With water, it's a little bit boring. Uh, I think that it's not a whiskey that you'll drink because you want an easy drink. Hell, this is a very challenging whiskey. Um, I love Peter's whiskey. I like Ardbeg and the like. Um, I enjoy the Chegg but this is a very, very robust whiskey. It is not an easy drinking whiskey at all. At 18, the peat has subdued a lot compared to the 10, but man, it is still a wallop in the face. The finish, very similar. I'm getting that burnt kind of, um, 
campfire leaf litter, the smoke lingering in my mouth, I can't get rid of it. Um, and I'm getting like a fresh rubber, a fresh rubber kind of resin. Uh, very, yeah, it just lingers a lot. If I had to pick, I'd pick no water in this one. Is it worth the price you pay for it? Now, I found this in an old liquor store, funny enough, in um, South Africa. So when I go to South Africa, I check out, I shouldn't give away my secrets, but when I go to South Africa, I check out every single liquor store and look at their top shelf. Sometimes you will find stuff there that's been there for 10, 15 years, and they can't sell it because no one wants to buy anything more than 100 US dollars. And then you will find gems like this. But retail-wise, is it worth buying? I don't believe so. Personally, I wouldn't pay retail for this in terms of its retail price, um, just because it's 48, the 48% 48 doesn't quite do it justice, in my opinion. Um, but also, not just that, it's, it's just not integrated, not well balanced. I mean, I can't see myself, you know, um, watching some Netflix and then drinking some of this and you know, relaxing. It's just something that you gotta think about. It's, it's a challenging drink, it is. It, I mean, it reminds me of World War II bandages, you know, like your know, grandfather's old World War II um, cabinet um, with, with those bandages. It, it reminds me of that glue. It, it just hits you in the mouth. Uh, so my conclusion is, if you wanna try it, maybe try it in the bar first and then see if you like it. Um, if you're trying it in the bar, make sure it's at least half the bottle because if it's a little bit, then you'll get a, a warm sense of the power of it. The power of it is not complexity and flavor and interest point. The power of it is smoke and peat. So if you like that, do it. If you don't, then I suggest you don't. So thank you for joining me. Give me a thumbs up. Click that little bell, okay? And uh, please subscribe to my channel. If you want to give me feedback, what do you want to know about whiskey, tell me. Uh, tell me what, you know, yeah, tell me what you want to know about whiskeys and I will do a film, a, a, a film and a segment just for you. Um, and have you tried the Lafroy 18? Are you a fan of Lafroy 10? If you are, no offense, I don't mean to offend you. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. Well, I'm saying that, I still enjoy drinking it, but I just probably wouldn't repeat the experience again. Um, the, next, the next episode we have is going to be quite exciting. We're going to have the Adelphi single barrel 17 year old the freak to try. One year apart, you're not going to get much difference in terms of the year, so it'll be quite a good, just um, quite quite a good comparison between 10, uh, 18 and a 17 year old. And then after that, please stay tuned because we are going to do a side by side. That'll be very exciting. Side by side is very exciting. So thank you very much. Yeah. What are you going to tell me to do? <laughs>